Are you wanting to get even more serious about being prepared for 2022, but you're feeling overwhelmed? How do you overcome this and move forward? Let's talk about it. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris, and on this channel, we discuss emergency preparedness, AKA prepping. Now this week on the channel, we let off with the poll by asking this question, how long could you survive if there was a grid down SHTF situation and no help was coming? Now the results were pretty interesting. I'll break them down. There was five different choices and I'll list the percentage by each option. The first one was multiple years and 13% that took the survey responded they could survive that long. The next option was six months to one year, 25% responded on that one. The next option was three months to six months. That was 18%. The next option was three weeks to three months. We saw 22%. And then the last one was three days to three weeks. And that was 22, uh, 22%. Now we'll say that I think if I had done this survey even maybe two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, pre-COVID before everything started in March of 2020, um, I would say, I would guess probably closer to 50% of that number would have probably been a lower half of that poll. In other words, I think this community has grown, you've learned, and that's pretty impressive. Again, um, I've seen a lot of people mature and I've a lot of, gotten a lot of comments that people have been able to really take on prepping at a whole new level in this last year or two years. And again, uh, congratulations by that on the way to those that have really picked up the pace here recently. Now, I did have a subscriber reach out to me on Instagram. Her name was Misty and she wrote this today. Uh, she wrote, well, at the time of the recording of this video, she said, my problem is always trying to decide where to start. It seems like there are always so many things to prep that finding a starting point is tough. Maybe you could do a show on where to start and maybe steps to take to get you where you are. Now, I hope the video that I released a couple of days ago um, on how to, or rather a beginner's guide for prepping, I hope that's a good starting point. And again, if you're in that lower 44% where uh, from the survey, if you're under three months of being able to survive, if there was a disaster, I hope that video at least gave you a starting point to uh, take practical steps to put yourself in the best position possible. Clearly, there's no way anybody can guarantee any amount of time, even a day or two of survival, but stacking the odds in your favor by being prepared, having food stored, having water stored, having security, first aid, etc. These things simply stack the odds in your favor. It makes it more likely that you can overcome and endure these uh, potential issues that may come up. And my hope was with that video is that I could make it practical to help reduce the feeling of being overwhelmed, which leads us to the next point and kind of the point of this video is why is prepping so overwhelming? It feels like there's so much to do, so many skills to develop, so many things to buy. And I apologize if on this channel, um, I, I know I've been doing recently, I've been doing different product reviews. Um, I have several more solar generators I got to review over the next month. And uh, I made the mistake of getting several from several different manufacturers because my hope was to do one massive review in January showing all the different options on the market. So I don't want people to feel like you've got to get all these products I show. I just, I try to present options so that if you're interested in a particular model or something I'm presenting, it may be, may or may not be appealing to you. But again, there's that overwhelming sense that, oh my gosh, this video shows how to make this bag and this you know uh, video shows this product. Do I have to get all these things? No. What I always try to do is present options based hopefully to help you on your situation. And the other challenge is always, there's not enough time to do all this. There's so many things that are discussed, so many skills to develop. How is it even possible that we can do all these things with the limited time that we have? Uh, I've shared this before on the channel. I'm a father of three. Uh, we're a single income uh, family. My wife, we decided early on that she wanted to stay home and uh, homeschool, we just happen to have a very mobile lifestyle. We like to do what we want, when we want, and homeschooling made sense for us. So we're a single income family and I run two businesses. They keep me very busy and it's hard to find time in the day to do everything. Even taking the time to sit down and create quality content can be a challenge at time. And I know for me personally, between creating the content for this channel, running my other business, taking care of my family, raising my kids, trying to spend quality time with them, um, and then when I look over the horizon and I see what I perceive to be different issues that are coming that I feel are very problematic and that are pressing and that will demand our uh, time and action to prepare for them, it feels overwhelming. 
All that to say, um, I, I, I go through very similar feelings probably like you do. Uh, again, being a father, the world that we live in today, there's things that I look at and I, I ask myself, am I really ready? Am I going to be ready in time for whatever may come in? By no means do I live with a sense of anxiety, but I try to pace myself and try to do the best I can with the time that I have. And I know at the time of the recording this video, we're at the middle of December. I'll release this in a few days and we're pretty close to the end of the year. And every year, what do we do? Well, no, not all of us, but a lot of us historically, we, we start off with saying, okay, this year I'm going to do, I'm going to do it differently. I'll start off this resolution. I admittedly haven't probably had a new year's resolution in a while. I do sit and try to evaluate what's coming and I try to be realistic and, and map out the year as best I can. And it's easy to say to yourself that this year is a year I'm going to get serious about whatever. And in the context of this conversation, it may be easy to say, I'm going to get serious about prepping this year. This will be the year that I really, really get serious because I see the challenges coming. And just like a New Year's resolution, it's easy to give up early when you're feeling overwhelmed or you go off track or things don't happen the way you want it. And I know it's easy to to throw your hands up and just say, well, I, I didn't make it. I tried and it just didn't work out. It's easy to start both with resolve, excitement, and to find yourself a month later giving up. If you know anything about gyms uh, at the beginning of the year, the end of the year, and the beginning of the year transitioning in, you will see so much marketing from different gyms. And they know that everybody starts out saying, this is the year I'm gonna get fit, drop weight, you know, uh, weight lift, or lift, lift weights rather. And they know that. And of course, they're going to have some kind of incentive to get you in the door, sign you up. And they also know that after a month, you probably won't show up again. And they got you locked into a contract. And again, it's it's they prey on people, unfortunately, through marketing because they know it's effective. And my encouragement to you is to set a result, set something that you want to do. But let's talk about it a little more in practical terms because I don't want to set you up in this video because my hope is to give you some and words of encouragement, some practical advice to hopefully kind of accelerate you and to get you moving and to get you out of that sense of being overwhelmed because I've gone through it in preparedness and being, you know, uh, striving to be prepared. And the video that we did just a few days prior to launching this one, we talked about 10 things that you can do to start with. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, I would encourage you to start simple. That video was practical, or rather I chose to start with just 10 simple things. I didn't go into a lot of detail and so many other things that I could have gone off on. But my hope was to lay out simple things that you can do to get you started. And for me personally, uh, simple, practical things that I can do, it just works for me. I used to multitask for years. And what I found was I wasn't very effective when I began to go uh, you know, saying, look, I'm gonna work on this, I'm gonna work on this, etc." It's just, for me, it just didn't work out. There was a book I read, I tried to find it so I could show it in this video, I have no idea where it's at in the office, but it's called Deep Work. And the premise of the book is the author studied individuals that have been very productive in their respective environments, whether that's authors, professors at universities that write different uh, books and courses throughout the years, different, um, uh, what do you call them, review, or no, I'm not saying peer review, but different studies that they come out with, and some are able to do way more than others. And what he found was certain patterns that they, pulled aside and they avoided distractions and they went after those specific targets and goals they had. And for me, I learned a lot from that personally. And if you haven't read the book and you're interested, I'll put a link in the description section below. And for me, what I typically do, and this is just me, I try to find two, three things that I'm gonna work on that I know within a given timeline that I can focus on and I can do. And if I was encouraging someone that's starting out in emergency preparedness, and they would say, well, what are the two or three things that I should go after? It, again, I would, and this is what I'll always say on pretty much all my videos, I always recommend starting out with the ability to store water or a, being able to purify or, or filter it. If you live in an environment where there is water around you, at least knowing how to purify and filter it. I live in an area where we don't have really much water, so water storage is critical. The next I always encourage people is food. Go after learning the basics of some essential food storage. I've done a video in the past, I'll link to it in the cards above about building a two week food supply. It's a simple, practical video. And the last step, if, again, if I would just say pick three would be first aid. And again, I've done several videos on first aid and you can find plenty of first aid kits on Amazon if you decide you just wanna pick up one instead of building one. 
Uh, but that's the point being is start with something practical and simple. If you have those three lined up, if there's a major catastrophe or something happens, at least you'll have that to get you moving forward. Uh, I can't encourage that enough. Now, getting back to the video that I referenced earlier about billing, or rather starting out with the 10 items to focus on, uh, I would encourage you to go back, watch the video. I put a lot of notes in the description section, write down the items that I listed. And again, we're talking about practical steps that you can take. Take two or three from that video and say, okay, these are the three, these are the two that I'm gonna work on this month, for the next three months. And here's a budget I have to work with. I have, let's just say I'm pulling a number out, a round number, 100 a month. If you say I've got 100 a month to work on and I wanna get water storage, and I've got three members in my family and I wanna have three days worth of water, again, the recommendation is to have a minimum of uh, water per person per day, three people, three days, that's nine gallons. And if you have 100 a month, then okay, let's say that a five gallon water storage container on Amazon, I have it checked recently, they're usually around 30 bucks or so. Okay, I know I can get three of those, that gives me 15 gallons, that gets me a little head, and it stays within my $100 budget. You see what I'm saying? I hope by describing this, it gives you practical steps that you can take, actual actionable items, instead of allowing yourself to feel overwhelmed that, oh my gosh, there's all these things out there that I have no control over and I've gotta to get to them. Start with what you can control. Uh, my encouragement, and this is just me, I'm the kind of person I typically sit down, I set up a spreadsheet and go to Google Docs. Uh, there's usually a lot of free spreadsheet tools if you don't have one. And I usually set the items out, break them down, and set a timeline. And for me, that just helps. Being able to see it on paper or in a document of some sort, it always helps me do what works best for you, but just set realistic goals. Now, if you're further along in prepping and you say, okay, I've already moved past food, water, and, and first aid, then find the next important thing to focus on, whether that's a skill or that's an item that you need to purchase to help prepare you all the more. Again, my hope is if you're listening to this video, you at least can take away uh, a sense of encouragement to set a realistic timeline and be realistic with this. And I encourage you as well, if you're on the path of making purchases, at the same time, I would encourage you to also develop skills. Learning, for example, how to start a fire. I think that's an excellent place to start. Does it really take much to take some matches, learn how to get some tinder, learn how to build? Uh, I always enjoyed building a TP fire startup. That's just the way I did it. Boy Scouts usually shoved a lot of tinder down, had a little thicker sticks on the top and threw some matches and I would usually uh, pretty successful. Learn how to use a ferro rod. Uh, this one is a Fresnel lens. These are very cheap. You can pick these up for, I think, under five bucks on Amazon. They're really actually kind of cool. You can take and harness the power of the sun, magnify on a, a you know object, piece of paper, and start a fire really quickly. If you've been considering getting a ham radio license, boom, this is a year to do it. I would encourage you. I mean, you can pick up a Baofeng for, I think, 30, 35 bucks. They're extremely popular in the prepper community. I know people in the comments section are gonna say, well, don't start off with a piece of junk, but at this price point, it works and it gets you started. Ham radio license, I think they're about 30 bucks. You can go online, there's websites, and I'll post a link uh, in the description section below if you wanna check that out. There's even prep courses that you can use that will help you. And I know in my local area, they actually are now offering online ham radio license testing, so you don't even have to drive anywhere. How awesome is that? Another one, I'll uh, share this with you, is if you say, well, I don't know what to do. I mean, you know, I've had people reach out. Where do I start? What, 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 do you, what would you recommend? I, I mean, there's tons of YouTube videos on skills you can do, but here's a practical book, uh, uh, 52 Prepper Projects. I have no affiliation with them, but again, it's just a book I picked up years ago on Amazon. And what it does, it's 52, you know, a week per year, and it goes through different projects that you can do on a weekly basis to learn a skill. A lot of them are pretty cheap. Uh, you know, some of these are very basic clothes washer from plunger. Actually, that, that's kind of interesting. I, may, I might be working on that one next. Um, I, I used to have to hand wash my clothes when I worked overseas and places. And uh, I, yeah, I didn't enjoy doing that. I'll put it that way. So all that to say, find something. Spring is going to be here sooner than you think. I know we're still in fall, winter's a few weeks out and spring will be right around the corner. Have you ever wanted to learn how to start a garden? Again, there's a gazillion tutorials, YouTube videos, you name it, but find something that is realistic and focus on one or two things. The key here is not to get overwhelmed. And it's important to not just say, hey, I wanna do something, I wanna learn something, 
but rather write it down, set a date, and detail the steps that you're gonna to take to get there. Again, using the example, if you're saying, well, I wanna learn how to easily start a fire without matches. Okay, boom, I'm gonna buy a Fresno lens, I'm gonna learn how to do this, and I can't explain anything any simpler than that. A few bucks is needed for that, and you sit down and you begin to develop a skill. And I have learned this. If you don't set your calendar, someone else will. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is, Set a timeline, set things you wanna do. Uh, again, I run two businesses, I've got clients sometimes, I know this sounds horrible, but they'll call me nonstop if I don't put a boundary up. And then what ends up happening is at the end of the day, I get nothing done because I've opened my schedule. I learned that mistake years ago. And for me, what I've found that helps me to get where I need to be is I set up that calendar and I block off time and no one can get access unless it's within that time frame that I allow. And I would encourage you to do the same thing in your mind mentally and on paper, set down what you wanna go after. Write those things down that you wanna accomplish. I, I can't encourage you enough on that, write it down. There's one book that you probably heard me reference many times on this channel. For me, it made a big difference. It was called, the, or it's called The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. I know the guy's a little uh, <laughs> spastic of you. There's always seems to be controversy surrounding him. He's kind of out there, but the book is amazing. He lays down an attitude and a mindset uh, which, goes into the name, the 10X rule of going above and beyond and actually accomplishing, taking massive action to accomplish things. It was a game changer for me. It's a book I read and reread periodically. Uh, I would warn you, don't read it before you go to bed. I know for me, it gets me worked up every time I read it and I'm ready to go uh, conquer the world after I read it. So uh, again, if you need some motivation, it's a good book to start with. I'll, again, I'll put a link to that book below. And let me finish by saying this enjoy your successes. If you're watching this video and you got to this point and you may say, well, hey, I've actually accomplished a lot of things. I would love to hear in the comments section below, what did you learn this year? What are you proud of? What is it that you worked on that you've actually accomplished? And how would you incur encourage others in the community to do the same as you? Again, getting back to the survey that I posted or rather discussed at the beginning of the video, I was really surprised to see how many people have gone uh, or rather are as prepared as they are. Because again, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I had done that survey two years ago, those numbers would not have been the same. It's really cool to see that you guys are taking steps to move forward. So in saying that, if you have any thoughts, any feedback, please post that in the comment section below. And as always, stay safe out there.